So you clicked on this video because you want to know how to boost your productivity with Cursor. Well, I'm going to show you exactly how to speed up your workflow by using the new Cursor rules they just introduced. These rules give you way more control over Cursor and let you build apps crazy fast. But that's not all. I'll also be sharing some additional Cursor features you might not have known about, and I think you're really going to enjoy them, such as how you can add custom docs for new frameworks and programming languages. So, let's get started. Before we dive in, make sure to hit that subscribe button. It really helps us out and ensures you won't miss any of the cool tools and tips we've got coming your way. Okay, so let's just jump right in, and let me show you the new way to declare your Cursor Rules file. The old method used a .cursor rules file, but that's now been deprecated in favor of a new approach, one that makes adding rules much more specific and detailed. So I'll go into settings, then into cursor settings and scroll down. First, you'll see these AI rules. These are global rules for your cursor AI code editor, and they'll be applied to every project you open with cursor. I'll leave this file in the description below, but essentially what these instructions do is tell it to just give me the code straight away and not make excuses because it used to do that quite often. Ever since adding this, it has helped a lot. Now, if we go ahead and scroll down, you'll notice that there's actually a new way to add cursor rules to your project. It's called Project Rules, and basically, it lets you add project-specific rules really easily. So, let me show you how it works. Just go ahead and click on Add a New Rule, and then give your rule a name. For example, I'm just going to name mine my Python rules, and as soon as I do that, it'll go ahead and create this file for me. This is actually Markdown, but you don't have to use Markdown if you don't want to. Now here are some of the fields we need to fill in. I'll explain them in a moment. So let me just fill this out. So I filled in the Python rules file, and these are some of the instructions it needs to follow when writing Python code. Now here you can see we have the description, which defines when the rule should apply. Then we have globs, which specifies the file types that should trigger the rule. This means the rule will automatically include the file type in AI responses for file matching. So, when you give a prompt, it will already reference the correct file type to help pinpoint the files more accurately. Now in this project, you can see I have the front end, which is a Next.js app inside the source directory, and it's using TypeScript. Then, in the back end, I have Python files. Since the front end and back end are separate, using this method avoids confusion and allows for more targeted AI behavior, unlike the old rules file, which tried to handle everything at once. So if you want different cursor rules files for various programming languages and frameworks, you can visit a website called Cursor Directory. Here, you'll find different frameworks like TypeScript and languages like Python, JavaScript, and many more. For each of these languages or frameworks, people have posted different .cursor rules files. Just browse through them, read the descriptions, and if you find one you like, simply copy it and paste it into your cursor rules file. If any of you guys watching me uses Superbase, let me show you something interesting they did. In their GitHub repository, go to Examples, then navigate to Prompts. Here you'll find different instructions that you can input into cursor. For example, there's a prompt for database migration creation, and they've already provided the description in globs as well. So you don't need to write anything yourself, you just need to copy this and paste it. So, another cool feature is the Notepads feature. Let me show you what it is. Close this, open this Notepad section right here, and create a new note. You can also rename it. I'll rename mine to Prompt1, and then just type whatever you want. For example, make a new file. Yeah, for now, let's just write make a new file. Now, what's great about this is that if you want reusable prompts, you can just save them in your notepads. You can also add custom docs here as well. Then, when you open Composer, you can actually reference it using the notepad. Just type at prompt1 and then say something like run this prompt and it'll execute it automatically. So, another really cool hidden feature, you can actually search the web directly within Cursor. For example, if you type at web, you can search the web right from here. Let's try what is the latest version of Next.js and what are the improvements? You can see that it's searching the web and it directly gives us the latest version of Next.js along with the websites it's searched. These results are mostly from the official documentation and also include the core updates that were made in this new Next.js version. Pretty cool. Now, if you don't want to use the web, you can also use custom pre-indexed docs already available in Cursor. For example, if you type Tailwind, 
you'll find their docs. Let's see if we can find docs for N8N. Oh, they don't have docs for it. So, if a doc isn't available, you can actually add it yourself. Just paste the link to the docs. For example, the N8N documentation. And once you enter it, it'll ask for details. If you confirm, it'll take you to settings and you'll see that it starts indexing the docs you provided. Once it's done, you'll be able to reference them directly in the chat and be really, really productive. Before we finish off this video, let me tell you that you can also generate images right in cursor, as you can see in this demo that I found on X. It used an image generator via the MCP tools. These MCP tools, model context protocol, is another broad topic and an interesting one at that. So stay tuned for that video. All right, that's a wrap on this video. Go ahead and try these out and you'll definitely notice the difference. We've got plenty more cool stuff coming your way soon, so stay tuned and I'll see you in the next one.